Hello everyone. Uh, today, as I promised, what, a year or so ago, um, we're going to be painting Little Goblin. Now, he's not going to be in focus right now, because uh, my lighting in here sucks, because we're back in the garage for this one. Uh, but yeah, we'll come down to the table, I'll show you the paints I use, uh, get a better look at the miniature, and then we'll go from there. Um, so this tutorial is going to be for GW Contrast Paints. Um, so with that, I'm going to pause the video, swap the camera around. Be right back. All right, and we're back. Um, so I'm going to do a quick zoom out. So these are the paints we're going to need for this. Um, we're going to need one Flesh Terror Red, some Wildwood, some Snake by Leather, some Nosdreg Yellow, some Orc Flesh, obvious reasons, um, some Gorgruntifer, and that's it for contrast. Then what we'll need is some Earthshade, so Agrax Earthshade. Um, I'm doing a theme with all of my uh, goblins, so I'm going to use um, Armageddon Dust, and actually this isn't the one I'm going to use. I'm going to use my older one. This one chunks up better. Uh, I just need to dry this one out a bit and it'll be good to go. So I can put that one back over here for now. Um, we'll need some, what is this? Some lead belcher only cause since I'm doing all GW, I'm going to make it easier and just go with GW paints. But in all fairness, I hate lead belcher. This is in my opinion, the worst metal. What I do prefer is, um, gun metal by army painter. I find it a lot smoother and it has more of a, a metal feel where these are technically close enough to the same paint. I find gunmetal looks better than this one. I find almost has too much copper, like almost too much of a copper tone. Uh, but that's beside the point. We're going to use that. And then to finish off, we're going to use some Abaddon black on the base, uh, mainly for the rim. So to start off with, what we're going to do is clean up the desk a little bit. Um, I recommend a utensil to hold your miniatures in. Um, this is the first generation of the uh, painting arm from GW. So this is the second gen. Uh, the only reason why I don't use the second gen is since Mr. Gobbo here uh, is on a tiny base. He doesn't quite... He fits, but the problem is there's a little bit of a lip on this one. So it's hard to get into that recess. So what I will be using is this one because I get a little more clearance to play around with in these areas here. Um, we'll need a couple brushes. So I use the, this is, I want to say all these were from Target. Um, this one is a 10 over zero. It's a very tiny, thin bristle. This one is a, a one. Uh, this is really exclusively just going to be for the um, the Armageddon Dust. And as an added bonus, depending on if I can get it nice enough, uh, we'll use this to, to do the rim. And then this one here is a, what, a medium round brush. Uh, I think I got this from same set. This one is going to be for the, uh, the shade. So... Without further ado, we got our miniature in here and we're gonna start with some orc flesh. Now, make sure you got your water in close proximity. Let me get a little closer for me. Have a handy tin uh, paper towel or something to wipe off the brush with. This one uh, is their machine towels. I really like these, um, or mechanic towels, that's what they are. It, think of it like, really really strong paper towel it's almost got like a um almost like a cloth feel to it great for painting and for getting your dry brushing ready uh but first things first we'll move these out of the way because we're not going to need those till later same with this one and we'll start with the orc flesh so give it a good shake and let's get to it uh so the reason why i chose contrast first is a it's easier and b um, I've used it so much now that I've kind of, I kind of know all the ins and outs. And since it's my first actual painting video on camera, I would like to make it as easy as possible. So first things first, we're going to get this bastard in focus. 
Hocus, you bastard. There we go. And then we're just gonna lightly start painting. So easiest way. And again, this is a little harder because I'm trying to f do this while also focusing on the camera. So forgive me if this thing goes out of focus, my Lord. Just stay focused. Um, I'm just using my phone, so I don't know how well, there we go. I don't know how well this is going to look. Um, I'm hoping it's at least useful to somebody out there. I know Rico wanted me to do this because Rico's been asking me forever to do a painting video. Uh, so hopefully Rico, if you're out there watching this, I hope this helps you paint a goblin. Um, now I like GW's contrast paints. I really do. Uh, however, they are not worth the price. These bottles are really, really bloody expensive for what they actually are. Um, Army Painter now does a line called Speed Paint, which, in my opinion, is far superior. Um, the only drawback to the Speed Paint is it's not as um, strong as this stuff. God, I wish this would fucking stay in focus. It's not as strong. I find this goes on a little stronger. Um, when I, I tend to, when I tend to ink with the speed paint, what happens is I lose some of what I painted. So I just have to go back over it. The nice part is, um, even with ink on it, it still goes on really nicely. So it's not the end of the world. Um, so we're almost done with homeboy's face here. And I really wish I could just set this thing to manual and it would just do what I want it to do. Let's see if we can get up a little closer here. There. No? Focus. There, I wonder if I just turn that, hey, you know what? That might actually help. I just leave it right there and don't move it. No, it's gonna stop autofocus. Hold on a second. I'm gonna pause the video and see if I can figure something out. There we go. I think I just kept focusing on the other miniatures. Um, so let's move the light a little bit. There we go. All right, uh, that's nicer. Yeah, it's a little better. I apologize. Again, like I said, this is my first painting video. I didn't know how well this would actually work on camera. Um, the trick is just be, is take your time. Uh, if you if you mess up, the nice part about a goblin is it's really easy to fix. There's not many colors on this. Um, we're primarily going to go with greens and browns. So the browns will go over the greens fairly easily. So we can... We can miss. We can have a few mistakes and have it not be an issue. Um, but yeah, so I usually have the model a lot co closer to my face, so this is very, very awkward for me for some reason. Usually, all up in these things' guts, but not today. Uh, so, like these guys, I think I can do in about twenty minutes. Um, could be wrong on that estimate. I guess this is a very good litmus test as to how long it actually takes me to paint a goblin. Um, because, you know, I've never actually videotaped it. I've said that already. Whatever. You know me in editing. <laughs> so how are y'all doing? You excited for this shitty painting video? I am. Very. I'll just do well, some happy strokes. Honestly, every time I paint, I feel like, um, shit, what's, what's that guy's name? Um, Bob Ross. I always feel like Bob Ross. Uh, I don't know what it is. I could listen to Bob Ross talk all day about painting and shit never gets old. Uh, so what we're, what our end goal here is, and let's be fair here. I am 33 years old. I don't give two shits about golden demons or... Hey, bro, your, your, your miniature looks kind of shit. Uh, you, did you paint it? Well, <laughs> I don't care about any of that. You know what I care about? Having some color on it, sticking on a table, and having it look cool. So for me, uh, edge highlighting, uh, that shit's for the birds and the professionals. I don't give two shits about edge highlighting. Because uh, I think it's fairly useless um, for what I do. So... Is me. I just want some miniatures painted on the table. I'll, I'll, I'll play with plastic, with unprimed plastic. I really don't care. Um, but if I'm going for a look, I would rather have it at least 
painted up to quote unquote tabletop ready, which I think is a bullshit term anyway. Um, really slap some color on there. It doesn't matter if your thing looks like shit. You at least put the effort into it. That's art, right? As long as you try, that's really all anybody can ever ask for. So I find it kind of fucked up when people talk about how like, oh, your paint job doesn't look that good. Um, who cares? Did, did you take the time to paint it? Did you spend however long it took you to paint that goblin? No, you didn't. So shut the fuck up and piss off. We don't need assholes like you around, do we? But in all fairness, um, if, if your friend paints something and you want to be a dick, by all means, tell him the paint job's shitty. Because that's almost, that, that's kind of fun. But you know, you gotta, you gotta do it in jest. Because let's be fair, everybody's got different speed levels, everybody's got different patience um, for this stuff. It's not many people can do this. Like, in all fairness, um, this shit's long, it's tedious, uh, and really the payoff is, hey, I get to put this one goblin out for 10 minutes. Yeah, this is going to be a weird shot because it's right there. Uh, I get to put this goblin out in the field for 10 minutes before he gets blowed to smithereens. So, yeah. Just have fun with it. Um, I use this shit to relax. Um, although, in all fairness, sometimes it's not relaxing. But, hey. Most of the time I use it to relax. It's nice when it's not hot as shit out here. Uh, so, like, this, um... This specific model, I want to say, is from... Like, early two, Like, maybe late 90s or early 2000s Warhammer Fantasy. Um, only because... He was made in white plastic, um, which is something that was in, I want to say, 90s fantasy. 90s fantasy had a lot of, like, white plastic miniatures. Um, so, yeah, I think that's where this dude came from. I found him at a local toy store called um, Kerbopples Toy Store or something like that. Got this guy, got a couple, um, couple gobos and a handful of... Uh, uh, elves, dark elves. No, where did I get this? I got this from, um, I got this from a bits box at, damn, where was that? It wasn't too far away. It was actually kind of far away from here. Um, uh, not games parlor. That place is dead. Um, not the game store. Hold on. Game Garrison, game Garrison in Fredericksburg. That's where I got this guy. He was in one of their, uh, there are boxes of like miscellaneous dudes. And I was like, ah, I could use some goblins. Cause who can't have enough goblins? They're always fun fodder monsters to fight. Um, specifically in, um, I use them in Rangers of Shadow Deep, uh, uh, Five Leagues from the Borderlands, pretty much anywhere with a fantasy game that could use some goblins. Dungeons and Dragons, you know, all that shit. Uh, might use these for a game of Sengoku Monster Hunter. Because I know there are goblins in there. Um, although I do have some Kappas that I'm working on for that. Uh, picked that game up a little while ago. It's supposed to be played in 15 mil. But um, uh, all, all my shit's in 28 mil. So easy enough to just upscale the distances a bit in all fairness i think it pretty much uses um the same measurements you'd see in games like warhammer and stuff like that where it's already and like your dudes are like bum rushing the field pretty fast so running it at like a different scale shouldn't be too difficult at least from the rules that i read um because i do a lot more solo games now because really the only person that comes over to do anything is my buddy tony and he has been pretty busy as of late and the other one is my son and he he's like 50 50 with wanting to play the, these games anymore because i think he's kind of like he got pretty hardcore into minecraft as of late so miniature gaming time has kind of taken a back seat to uh baby's first virtual legos so you know there's that but it's all good. It's all good. Can, yeah, you can see it. Cool. Um, so yeah, like I said, we're going to be making this to quote unquote tabletop ready. Um, 
It'll be at least the what's the tournament medium three colors or whatever, um, which I think is kind of bullshit. As long as you make it look cool. I, again, that's that's my biggest thing. You can make a cool looking miniature with two paint with two colors. Um, I've seen some really neat grayscale samurai that looked amazing, and really the only colors the dude used were black and white. But I mean, he, he wet blended and mixed them a bit. So technically there's three colors in there, but really it's just different gradients of <clears throat> black and white and, and I guess gray. Um, but yeah, love to learn how to do that because his Kurosawa inspired samurai were really, really cool. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's that. Uh, just got word that the expansion packs are shipped for Quest for the Lost Pixel. So, might have to change my timetable on that one to a little sooner. Um, because I think what I'm going to do is the initial review of the base game. And then from there, I'm going to do a Let's Play. And then I'll do a review of the extra components that I get. Sorry, I'm trying to do this eye right now. Um, and then from there, we'll go for uh, another full playthrough with all the expansions added in. And we missed a little under his neck. We're almost done with the skin here. Now, the nice part is he doesn't have any teeth, and that will save us some time. And the use of... Um... Oh, perfect. I forgot it. Uh, using the skeleton color. Where did I see? Right there. Some more neck bits. Uh, I just got to gently get in here. Again, the, um, the leather is going to cover up a lot of this green at least, so we don't have to be too, too careful. Um, but that is the skin. Let me just get this ear here. That's the skin done. So now, wipe off our brush. Um, we're done with green for now. May need it again later, but I doubt it. Uh, we can do the eyes really quick, which is really the only thing you need the red for. Um, so if you have another red, I'll substitute it. Um, I find this red is really good for a lot of things. So having it is pretty, pretty good. Uh, but for the interest of saving yourself money, unlike what I did, go ahead and don't buy it. Um, so what we're doing here is we're just kind of rolling the tip a bit because we are going to try and just get the eye here. There we go. There's one little goblin eye and two little goblin eyes. Actually, we're going to need a little, little more paint on that brush. Two little goblin eyes. And we can get in here a little more. Alright, so there's focus. Focus. Go. There's his eyes done. You see how easy that was? That was like what, two strokes ish, give or take. Um, I do want to go back for one second. Fix one little mistake I found. Um, now this is the problem that I personally have because I got a little bit of mild OCD. Um, this little spots like this will drive me nuts unless I correct them. So, and like this right here, this little shit in the corner. I know it'll get covered up once I put in the ink, but I don't care. It's wrong and it needs to be corrected. So I corrected it. Just like that. And then we can put a little more right here. And that should mix the red a bit. Give me a little more definition on that nose. Cool. Uh, hold on while I take a pull of some drink. Because I picked the wrong day to do this. This is hot as shit right now. Um, all right. So, skin. Done. Next. Uh, I would say we want to do... Wood. And let's see, we got wood, wood, wood. 
I think that's it for wood. Um, unless I want to do a wooden sword hilt here, which I could probably get away with, or not. I think we'll come back to that. I might just paint that gray. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so we'll do wormwood next. Uh, we're gonna take our wormwood, give it a nice little shake, crack that some bitch open, and go in here. All right. So first things first, while our tip is nice and made, we can just put an easy little line right across. Now, as you can tell, you couldn't see before, and hell, I couldn't even see it, but there was actually a fair bit of detail in these um, in these bow in these arrows, but you couldn't see it. And then once you put the contrast on, bam, it pop out like it's nobody's business. There we go. So that's nice line of arrows. And we take this and start working on our bow. Sure, I'm in focus. Cool. Like I said, the nice part is a lot of this will like move really, really well. And one thing I have found, at least with um, like this contrast style paint, or even the speed painter can you can do this too. If you make a boo-boo, like a really bad boo-boo. If you wash off your brush and keep and wipe it off and then keep some water on it, you can fix those boo-boos fairly easily without damaging the paint scheme you already have going. Um, but really, let's be fair here. It's better to have to attempt a steady hand than it is to try and repaint these. Because as soon as you put a second coat of Wraith Bone, which is what I used for the base, and honestly, it's what I, if there's anything you're going to buy from Games Workshop, um, I recommend their Wraithbone uh, primer. It's a little pricey. It's about 20 bucks a bottle. However, um, it goes on so smooth. It's a, um, I want to say it's like a satin finish to it. Uh, it soaks up paint really, really well. Um, it latches onto metal really well like all my metal miniatures i use it on now and it, it just it makes colors pop um it really really does even when you're not painting with contrast paint it still it brings out a lot of color underneath um i used krylon's cover max gray for years because i was never a fan of white because it was always too bright and black was always too always took too long to paint up from uh, so like a dark gray was always really good for getting your neutral colors and then going f and then just painting over it and getting what you need. Uh, however, some time ago, Krylon made it damn hard to get their, their cover max, like the bottle I liked. And it, it just, it isn't the same. It's tackier. It doesn't have the same consistency. Um, it's just, uh, it's just kind of trash now. I got like, um, here, I'll show you. Like this guy right here, he's painted up with, or he's primed with Krylon. And like, look at that coverage. Like, it's not that good. And that's just, it, it's grainy almost. Like it's very, very grainy. Whereas this right here is um, Gracier by Games Workshop. Look, it's a nice white base. It covers fairly well. I didn't get the underside too much, but like the coverage is really good. You don't lose any detail. Um, it, it's just, yeah. Uh, let me see if I have an old one that I painted up. Like this guy. This guy right here was done with a Krylon from shit four years ago. I still need to paint him, but like look at how much nicer it used to go on. Like Krylon used to be really, really, really good. And then. They changed their formula and now they suck ass. So that's cool. They don't need my money, I guess. So it looks like we are done with wood. Um, and you know what? I changed my mind. I am going to put, I'm going to do a wooden handle. We'll just put, do a little bit on the hilt here or on the handle of this knife. Cause that way they're all kind of different. Um, cause I made a few of these already. Um, that's why I kind of decided to go with these goblins cause still have three left to paint. So I figured 
two birds, one stone. I'll paint one with speed paints, one with contrast, and one with regular paints for you guys. And hopefully the next video I'll have something more entertaining to talk about because I feel like this one sucks. Uh, so that's it for wood. We're done with that. So we're going to wipe that bad boy off. Give our brush a nice wipe. And next we are going to go with the... Um, uh, let's do... Uh, let's get the yellow because I think the only thing I'm going to be using yellow for are the... the arrow feathers because I actually really like how the arrow feathers turn out um, with this yellow so get a little arm brush and then just quickly splotch it on and again we don't have to be super super accurate with this because if we get anything on it on the skin um, it won't really show up on that green too well and if it's on the if it's on the shirt it really doesn't fucking matter because the brown's so much stronger so i find if you got small areas and you can get you can paint them without over painting too much it's a really really good idea to start with those and then be more careful when you're going around because going from yellow to from going from nosgroth yellow to gorgrunta is a lot easier than going from gorgrunta to Nos uh, nosdreg yellow or whatever the fuck that yellow is called. Um, speaking of that, let's go to Gorgrunta. I like Gorgrunta. Um, it's a very, very... Very light brown. Um, this is actually what I've been using to paint my Goombas. Speaking of that, let me just go grab one. Gotta make sure this is the one I painted uh, with it. Yeah. No, it's not. This one is. Here we go. So this right here is painted with Gorgrunta. It's it's a really, really nice brown. Um, I really like it. So that's the brown we're gonna use for his cloth. And then we'll use snake bite leather on the helmet the uh, quiver and his belt and then this leather strap here but first let's do some gorgrunta like i said i really really like gorgrunta and this is going to be tough as shit um so we're going to actually move the model a bit so i can get a better handle on it there we go so we just lightly and easily go around without trying to touch the skin or the arrows and it gives us a nice, light, rich brown. That goes really, really well on fur, in all honesty. Um, I really like it for fur. Um, which I guess is kind of what it's supposed to be for. But I don't use the colors as intended, because if I did, this would be... Uh, they win in the end. So... Fuck them? I don't know. I'm tired. I had a long day. I was actually going to start playing um, Doki Doki Literature Club. I ended up buying it, uh, surprisingly enough, on a whim from GameStop because it was on sale for dirt cheap. And the guy who sold it was telling me how fucked up this game was. He said it was like an extreme mindfuck of a game, which I thought was weird because looking at the front of it, it just looked like your generic anime dating sim so i was like yeah okay buddy whatever you say and then he started saying some shit and i was like hold on have you ever heard of the movie uh eraser head he said yeah i've seen it and he said what about a serbian film he's like yeah i know of it i mean i know how fucked up it is and i was like okay cool so if you were to rate it from eraser head to a serbian film where would you place it and the dude no shit straight up said I would put it closer to a, a Serbian film and how fucked up the game is. And that right there, for whatever reason, sold me. I was like, okay, now, now I got to see what you're saying. And I checked some of the reviews without reading into any spoilers. And everybody was saying kind of the same thing. Like the game is like fucking batshit insane and disturbing. So 
Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna jump into it here fairly soon because I'm 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 curious now. Like, if this game is so fucked up, I wanna I wanna see why because it doesn't look like it's gonna be fucked up. So I might um, as I started, I might make mention of how my travels in that game are going. Um, like I said, I've been on a bit of a roguelike kick as of late. Um. I've been playing um, Anarachis, I think is the name. And I just started playing um, Antherion again, which is a really cool kind of like tactical old school CRPG. Um, and Bastard Bonds, which is a closer to a, um, a strategy RPG um, akin to like, say, Fire Emblem. But you have like a band of criminals, and it's it's got a it's a really really cool game. I in, enjoy it a lot. Uh, definitely not for kids. Uh, really not for kids. Uh, but that's a fun game. And what was the other one I was playing not too long ago too? Ah, Enemy. Enemy's an old game. That's been in my Steam library for ten years now. I think about ten years. Uh, that game is solid. It's a turn-based tactical RPG where you have a small party of dudes and you're running through this voxel-based environment. That's all. It's all physics-based. Um, it's all voxels, full physics engine, and your goal is to defeat. I think it's five, five big bads and save the land. And oh boy, is that game like. That's what happens when XCOM and Minecraft have a baby because it looks a lot like Minecraft and it's got, but it's got like a full on destructible environment physics system. So like, Hey, I got a tree here. If I hit it with enough machine gun fire, it'll fall. If I'm lucky, it'll just fall on the enemy and kill them. Um, it's at a TPK last time I played because <laughs> fucker did just that shot, shot down a tree in front of me and smashed my party. Which is why you never keep your party super, super tight knit. And since I haven't played that game in like a couple years, I found out the hard way why you don't do that. Um, but yeah, it's 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 fun. So I've been been kind of picking like picking through my backlog, if you will, uh, just playing some older stuff, just because I kind of just wanted something different after Elden Ring, um, which is funny because. Immediately after finishing Elden Ring for the second time, I loaded up Dark Souls 3 with the Ascension mod and was like, yeah, okay, this is this is what I was looking for. <laughs> uh, you know, go from one Souls-like to an actual Souls game. Go figure. Uh, we can put this a little... We'll get a little more brown in there. There we go. There is his cloak. All done up. Let me close this because we're done with this one. We can go to some leather. And as you see, right now we're at three colors. Technically, we could quit and not give a shit. But I ain't going to do that to you. Mainly because um, my brain won't let me. Um, so we got our we got our snake bite leather here. We're gonna get a little off. And we'll start with the quiver. Uh, so just some light strokes because uh, the Gorgrunt is still going to be a little wet. And you can tell right off the bat how there's just a so just a, enough difference in the snake bite leather that it actually worked. It it complements the um, the Gorgranta pretty well, so like they look fairly good together. And because we're going light on dark, we can go over those arrow shafts and have no issues whatsoever. All right, cool. I'm still in focus. Uh, but the goal, the best thing to do would be not to get this on the green, uh, because that is a bitch to fix. I know this because I've had this happen before. There we go. Thank you for focusing camera. I love you for that. Um, so yeah, um, for the two or three people who are going to watch this, um, give me an idea of what to talk about on the next video. So I don't ramble on about jack shit. Maybe we can get a discussion going on something or give me like a Q and A. I don't know. 
I'm game for anything at this point because I at least want to make, I want to entertain you guys while I somewhat entertain myself. Um, we're just going to stipple this around a bit just so it looks a little more like leather. All right, so that's done. Let's get the belt. Get a little more on there. Now we could paint that metal buckle. I'm not going to because uh, we're looking for to do this to get this quick and dirty on the table and that is my goal to help you guys and it's it's, it's a fucking goblin like who cares um, as long as it looks like a goblin we're good um, if you really want to though you can take your brush put a little metal in there and you're good to go um, uh, yeah fuck it let's do that there we go all right, we got the belt done on that side. And then we just gotta go in for the scabbard. You can go a little dark on this one. Just give it a little bit of gradients. Um, now I think this is supposed to be metal, but on all the ones I've done, I've painted it as if it is in a leather, a leather sheath. Um, only because it would look weird if it's just holding the dagger by itself. At least to me it would. And did I get some on there? I did, but that's fine. Um, Cause I can show you how this works. So wipe off a brush really quickly, get a little more water on it. And then we just go under to where we messed up and just get it wet. And if we're fast enough, it should. Yeah, see, there you go. Took it right off. And then we can take our favorite towel, just lightly dab that area to get the water off. And voila. No problems whatsoever. That's why I love this shit. You can't do that with acrylic paint. You do that with acrylic paint, you may reactivate it and get the, um, and fuck it up. Uh, so let's get some more brown in here. Finish doing this bit. We're actually going to go back to the yellow only because we're going to make the, um, the hilt of his dagger golden. I know he's gonna be a fancy goblin. He's got that uh he's got that loose coin chain, that loose coin purse. Coin purse? He's got a big coin purse. Uh, so he's gonna have a golden hilt. Now there's not much difference in the back here. Um it'll dry a little lighter, maybe, or it'll look better when it's shaded. Let's let's be fair here. So now the last bit of leather we got on here is his helmet. This one we got to be really, really careful on because we've already painted the face up. So we just lightly and gently go up the up around the ear, up around the face. And then if you're lucky or you're unlucky like me, you have a bit of a hook on the end of your paintbrush. And what that hook will do is kind of get underneath a lot of this stuff. And as long as you're very careful, You'll get right around those edges and not and uh, not contaminate the skin that you painted, like that. So we're gonna do the same thing over on this side. I'm just gonna gently go up the side here and see how it's since it's darker, it's gonna cover up that green. And it's gonna make it a little. Um, it'll still have some. It'll still show some of that quote unquote like some of that green. But what it's going to do is it'll make that area a little darker. So we can actually go over a second coat once it dries in a few minutes and fix it up some more. And then it won't look like it's it was ever green to begin with. Or look closely like it was never had ne never had anything on it. God, I'm getting a dry throat. This is a lot harder to talk for almost 40 minutes. For, oh, excuse me, 40 minutes to paint this. I am slow as shit. Um, but yeah, so we're almost done. Uh, the biggest thing here is going to be your dry times. So depending on what climate you're in, speed paint or the contrast paints can take anywhere from two minutes to five minutes to finish, to be completely dry. Um, I think they say to leave them for like 15 minutes, but I mean, I've, I've had them dry within like two minutes before, so it's not that bad. There we go, see? Covered it up. We got a little splotchiness up here, but uh, again, a lot of this, the ink is gonna is gonna clean up for us. And I did notice a little bit of spot. We can put some Crunch of Fur back. 
while the leather dries, then we can do the metal bits and be done. Um, and then we'll ink it. Well, actually, I might pause the video, let the Armageddon dust dry, and then ink it. So I got another one over there we'll ink, and then we'll come back to this one later. Um, what are we going for? We're going for Gord Grunta. All right. Because I just for, I just remembered it takes about 30, 30, 45 minutes for the Armageddon dirt to... Um, actually dry 100% it takes a while there we go all right his neck is done now we can brush this off we can grab some of that lead belcher which I absolutely hate again um, I don't recommend buying it but if you got it in a starter set or something hey it's not the worst thing in the world I know I got this in a starter kit with the agrax or a shade the dust and a, the black and a couple other colors um, it was for a Blitz Bowl box set. Um, they had them for sale. Oh my God, that paint is trash. Um, yeah, so that's, hold on. I gotta pause the video. I'll be right back. All right, and I'm back. My wife needed help with something. Um, all right, so I shook the shit out of this lead belcher. And this is why I don't like, like actual paints from GW, like in their pots, uh, cause their pots are shit. Uh, so now we're just going to gently and carefully go over this little metal piece in front of his nose so it's not uh, fuck up his nose because we colored that pretty well. And that's about all we need. God, i got to thin this shit. That and GW paint is like really, really thick. Their black's never this thick, but like their metals are way too thick. I can paint Army Painter metals straight out the um, straight out of the bottle without thinning them. GWs I always have to thin. I don't like that because um, I'm not a big fan of thinning paints because I find that just wastes time. I really only waste like two seconds, but that's two seconds I could be closer to being done. And then I think this is good. Yeah, I think this is good. Uh, a little spot there. All right, well, there is a metal piece on his head, um, which we're going to do in a gold, as well as the hilt, hilt, pommel. There we go. That's the word I'm looking for, the pommel of his dagger. We're going to put some more of this on and we're going to paint this gold now i think you're about to ask yourself but nico why are we painting it silver what is up with this airline food well uh disembodied voice in my head uh airline food isn't too bad um at least if you're fat like me and second of all we're going to use contrast paints to change the color of this metal um, and it's actually a really, really cool technique. It's one of the reasons why I really like contrast paints, actually. Um, I know it works really well with bolt metal. I don't think I've ever done it with one of these. So we will find out here shortly if this works. All right. So we'll just let that dry for a moment. Put that down. Get the brush in here. Give it a swirly swoop. Wipe it off. And then we're going to hit back to our... Nas drag yellow. Give it a nice shake. I put some agitators in here. Um, they're literally just some metal ball bearings. Uh, the reason being is if you do that, it shakes the paint up better. So I recommend any any paint you get, uh, put some ball bearings in it because damn if it doesn't make the paint a lot nicer to work with. I know the Army Painter Speed Paints already have ball bearings in them, um, so that's nice because it saves you a couple bucks. Uh, but GW never puts it in there because they're cheap as shit. Um, and the older army and army painter doesn't put them in all their bottles. They just put them in the, uh, contrast in their speed paints only because it mixes up the pigments a lot better. So I hope you can see this. If you'll focus paint bottle in the way. Oh, you like it right there. Okay. That's not annoying, but sure. 
So we're just gonna put this right directly on. And as you can see, we got instant golden armor. Look at that. Pretty fucking cool, huh? That's why I love contrast paint. I could take anything and make it a nice metallic-y color. And we'll go to the hilt of this blade. Do the same deal. Look at that. Now I have a nice golden pommel. And that's it. Um, that is one tabletop ready kind of goblin. So now to do the base. Um, most of my Dungeons and Dragons miniatures, I'll usually do just a black base because I don't give a shit. Um, or I'll do a clear base. Uh, but if they have a tab, like for, say for instance, um, this Western dude, see, it's got this tab here. I'll paint that tab in like a neutral gray or like a, um, a concrete gray, like something, or like a, like a dark stone gray. And then I'll ink over it and paint the black base around in black. Uh, only because it gets a little more contrast off the black and because it's there and I, it would look stupid painting that black. So that's why I do that. But for say like something like this dude right here i would paint the top gray i just paint it gray throw some ink on it and say hey look it's uh it's like dirty concrete this is a pretty cool miniature this is from um stone stonehenge games back in like the late 90s they made a game called chinatown wars uh i have a ton of these models um these think those I got two more of these guys to paint and then I have the entire set painted that I own um so that's it's on the back burner because those guys are kind of a pain in the ass to paint especially because it, I painted that skin tone many years ago and I don't remember what I used so next what we are going to do is put on the Armageddon dust then after that we'll go to my We'll ink one of my other ones and then we'll call this video quits until I finish up this guy and show you how it looks all done up. If I can get, all right. So this one, I just want to do a little offset because we don't want to get any of the, um, we want to try not to get any of the, the dirt, like the texture paint on this because the pain in the ass to get off. You can scratch it off with a knife, but it kind of sucks. So we give this stuff a really, really good shake. Uh, specifically this one because it is, um, as you can tell, it is thick and goopy in there. It kind of looks like runny baby diarrhea. Um, but what we will need to use, um, or what I like to use, is a sculpting tool of some sort. Just something to get the, to scoop it out. Um, I like to scoop it and put it right on the top here. Just get a nice big glob of this shit, put it up here. Now about two or three globs is what you want because that'll nine times out of 10 get you the entire base, specifically on this tiny little 20 mil base. Um, so as you noticed, a lot of my, none of my stuff have thick bases. And that is because I hate like high rimmed bases. I just think they don't look good. Um, so what I did was I use little one inch bases like you'd see in Dungeons and Dragons, like the D&D &D miniatures. Um, here's some I made myself out of plastic card and a one inch punch. Or um, if I go down to, where is it? Here we go. This is a good example. Uh, down at Michael's, they sell just a bag of wooden discs in different like sizes and shapes. Their big one is like a little under 40 mil and it works perfect for like your big barbarian dudes like this guy. Uh, this one actually needs another spray paint so I can go. And he needs a new base coat because I, I messed that one up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's go back to this. We're going to just dab on a glump, a uh, big glob of it. One in the front, one in the back, being very careful not to get it on his skin right away. And then we just kind of push it around and make it look like muddy, dirty earth. Now, I think what I'm going to use these for is to play um, uh, Song of Blade and Heroes. I'd like to play that again. 
Um, and these guys will work really well for that because I got a lot of orcs and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, we just kind of brush this on. We want to do kind of a thin layer first and then push the big glob around and kind of like mix it in with the light spots. And that'll look, make it look like we have um, earth kind of like different, different elevations in the earth. Uh, it looks really cool when it's done and I'll go grab a grab one to show you because after we ink it and once it's fully dry it looks really really cool um, only problem is it slows down the painting a little bit because this shit takes about 20 minutes to dry uh, depending on your weather um, or at least this one does my other my other bottle that I bought the new one takes a little longer and I think that's only because it's I need to mix it really well I just got to go find some toothpicks um, so I can get in there and stir it. We're just gonna lightly brush a little bit over here. Like I said, we're gonna get some of it on his skin, but that's fine. I mean, if he's walking around in mud, he's gonna get a he's gonna have some dirty feet. He's gonna look like a dirty hobbit after this. Um, as long as we push it around, that big glob it'll make um, it'll make some really cool texture. Like I'm, I was really impressed with this paint. Um, there, they made one that's like a cracked desert earth. That one's another really cool one, um, but I don't do a lot of like desert themed shit, so um, it doesn't get used often. I think I used it on a Fenrir resin uh, like dune buggy, which I can go grab and show you guys. Like a, it's a pretty cool model. I was pretty happy with how it turned out. But as you can see, I'm just kind of teasing it around, just moving some of this big glob around to just get some nice pockets and a little more over here there you go and when that dries it's gonna look pretty damn cool if i do say so myself um so yeah that's that's it so we'll set him down to dry clean off the brush and for when you're using these texture paints i recommend giving your bristles a real good rub down in the water um just because you want to get all that shit off there because it likes to stick. And look at that. A little bit of little bit of action. Good to go. Little little fucked up, but whatever. That's why I only use that one for that. But since he's good to go for now, we're just gonna take him take him off. Put him off to the side because we're gonna let him dry. And we'll do one that I've already painted. So this is kind of like um this is what it looks like when it's done. See, it kind of looks like some dirt. Uh, this one was done with that bottle. Like I said, it's a little chunkier. So it gets like this, like, see, it makes a really, really cool texture. Missed a spot, but that's fine. The ink will fix that. Actually, you know what? We'll ink this one. We'll save that guy for later. So for this, we're just gonna put him back in at about a halfway. So we don't want to, we want to try to mitigate how much ink gets on the, on this. And then I'm just going to grab our bottle of Agrix Earthshade. Give it a nice shake. Open it up. And as you can see, it makes a nice little pool. Now, again, the, the, these bottles suck, but this is kind of helpful. So we just pop it in. And if you haven't used the brush, brush in a while, just kind of like crack it out a bit. And then just get it nice and soaked up and wipe away some of the excess. Then we go. I like to start from the back and work my way over. So we'll just slap it right on. What this is going to do is add a little more earthiness to it. And it's going to get in all those recesses and pool in there. And what that'll do is give us some nice depth and extra detail. I just realized I used Wraith Bone on these, but whatever. It still looks kind of cool. As is, it looks cool. Um, when you're inking, you don't want to go overboard. If you have big puddles, it, um, it'll it end up fucking up the model. And I'll show you an example of that after we do, we do this. Because that's not what you want. Because you can have a really, really cool paint job that just looks fucked up because of it. Now, on the base, pools are fine. Pools are actually kind of... They, they help fix some poor details. Um, but... On the miniature itself, it's not what we want. So we're just gonna lightly go in here, lightly go in here, brush all around this guy. Hold on a second.
All right, I'm back. Um, I don't remember what I was talking about, but whatever. Uh, yeah, so the biggest thing here is we want to try and mitigate big pools like that right there. That's bad. We want to kind of spread that around um, because that will totally, totally fuck up the paint job. I realize, like, yeah, we've, we've spent a long time on this model. Like, not specifically this model, but in general, we spent, like, we spent some time on that model. Uh, we want to try not to have it fucked up, you know? Uh, so the less poolage we get, the better. But we do want some pool. We want a little bit of pooling because uh, that will bring out some of the details. It's just there's, it's a, there's a fine balance we want to roll. And as you can see, I'm going over it a second time just because... Sometimes you want to, it just needs a little more. Like, give it a feel, you know? If you don't like how it dries the first time, just go over it a little more, darken it up. It's your model, man. Do what you want. Uh, but yeah, so we're just kind of going through here, getting it on. Now, I've been using a lot of the gloss, um, the gloss earth shade as of late, mainly because uh, when I bought it, I fucked up and didn't realize they made a gloss and didn't read. So, oops. Uh, but I actually really like using the gloss on metal miniatures. Because um, an added bonus is contrast paint can scratch off. So, it's highly recommended that you um, that you slap a clear coat on top of it. Uh, but, if you don't want to, um, then you're kind of forced to if you use a gloss paint. Because otherwise your model is going to be really fucking shiny. Um, but, yeah. Uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, the the gloss the gloss will actually put a nice protective barrier over the top of it, and then when you hit it with your primer or with your clear coat, you'll get an e you'll get even more protection on it. Um, so that's why I recommend actually doing that because it looks pretty good, um, still functions the same, and this stuff does lighten up a bit when it dries. So like he won't look as dirty, you could say. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for inking the body. And now we're just gonna just grab a shit ton of this stuff and just throw it right down on the base. Um, cause it doesn't matter if it pools too much on the base cause it'll still look fine. Uh, the biggest part that we got to work on is that hole that we saw over here. We just take a little bit, kind of pump it in under the foot and it'll, it'll start changing. See, there it goes. Now it'll dry, it'll look kind of tan, and that's that's it. That's inking 101 uh, with your professor, uh, Dr. Dipshit Nico. Um, that looks good. A little bit of pooling there so we can move some of this shit around. There we go. Go a little more there. No pooling. No pooling. Now you'll know like a big pool when you see it. So just kind of like, just take a look. He's done. So now we just let him dry for like 20 minutes, give or take, depending on the weather outside. And he'll turn out looking something. Let me, find, let me see if I can find somebody who has the same kind of scheme. Um, it'll work. Dip. Then... And once he's finished and dried, he'll look a little something like this. Now notice how the green is kind of dark, kind of grungy, but it's got a nice like natural feel to look to it. And this honestly is a really bad representation because this dude is very flat as far as the sculpting goes. But you know, this water goblin's pretty cool. I like him. I got a few more of them to paint. Uh, but in the interest of fairness to show you how this can turn out really, really nice. Here is a metal miniature done all in contrast paint with minimal metal. So this is using the bolt metal from Army Painter and all G uh, GW contrast paint with that dirt texture. Um, I used a gloss overcoat on it and this dude turned out so cool, so cool. Uh, so this is Yurik from uh, Reaper's Miniatures. He's metal. 
Uh, and he is probably my favorite fighter slash Viking model that I've owned. Uh, I, I love this mini. It's so cool. And he's nice and intimidating. Like, move him out of there. Like, look at this. Next to a goblinoid, it, it's like, yeah, that goblin, it, he's toast. And then you get a uh, big boy over here, like, um, like Mr. Barbarian, who's, again, same size base, big wooden, wooden disc. Like, even just the, he just looks like he's ready to fucking take on anything. He's like, you throw a dragon or a demon at this dude, he's ready to go. Um, so yeah, that's, that's that. We're gonna let that guy dry. I'm gonna let that one dry. I'll, uh, I'm gonna stop the video. I, I didn't want to do this, but I'm gonna have to, like, splice these two together. So once these are dry, we'll go back. I'll paint up that one. We'll paint the rim up and then we'll uh, we'll be done. So until I finish that, I'll pause it and probably take I'll probably come back to this in about an hour. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, and we're back. Um, <clears throat> so he finished drying. Oh, all right, now I'm on camera. So this one finished drying already. However, Dirt took a little longer on this one, so he's still drying, but we can we can do the base now because the body itself is done. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our black ready. I'm gonna wipe off the tip here so it doesn't get all crusty, or as crusty as it can. As you can see, like, notice how it gets kind of like gunky in there? That's really what screws up these paints. Um, so we're not gonna need the armature anymore. What we're actually gonna need is just a hand on head and rim easily accessible and we're just gonna put a little paint on our brush I may have to go to a different brush we'll see and we're just gonna yeah no you know what I'm not gonna risk it we're gonna grab a different brush this one is specifically only meant for dirt and that is exactly what we're specifically only going to use it for because um, that the bristles are not fudged um <clears throat> where's my Good one. I use this guy because it's got like a fairly flat, fairly flat bristle. So we'll use that. Get that off camera. Okay. So you just take them like this, and then we just lightly blacken the edge, the rim. Um. Yeah. So. For future videos like this, I'll ask you guys, because this seems to be like it's going to be long as shit. Um, would you prefer that I speed up during the painting or kind of carry on as I do? Because I'm going to do three of these for sure. Because um, I already said I would. I'll do one with the speed paint. This is the one with the contrast paint. And then I'll do, a, um, I'll do another one with regular paints. God, we're back to the auto-focusing issue, I think. Um, so yeah, let, let me know in the comments below, you know, audience engagement and shit. <laughs> um, but yeah, just let me know how you guys think I should handle it. I personally don't mind doing the talking. Um, I don't know how much of y'all would actually want to watch a hour long video of some fat bastard painting a goblin, but Hey, listen to each their own. I ain't going to kink shame on this channel. Lord knows I, I, I got some funky likes, so been spending the past couple days watching Wylock's Armory, uh, just crafting stuff, because I'd love to craft some more tabletop terrain, uh, but I don't have the room for it, otherwise I would. So there's that. Uh, so yeah, we're just kind of lightly going over the base, just to get it nice and evenly coated, and bam, that's done. We'll let him sit and dry, which will take about two minutes, him just good to go. And then we'll come to this guy, and we're going to be a little more careful because he's still got some wet ink on him. Make sure I'm in focus. I'm in focus. All right, then we're just going to do the same thing. We're just going to lightly stroke, <laughs> lightly stroke the, uh, the rim here. God, it's so sexual, and I'm not trying to be. Um, but yeah, we'll lightly stroke the rim and get a nice 
fairly even black coat on it. Um, you want it to be a little bit thicker only because you don't want it to scratch off because um, that would be bad. But, uh, you know, just really depends. Kind of like most work, it's always the, it's always the touch-ups and the little end bits that take the longest because you just got, it's so much extra stuff to do. But hey, that's, that's what we're here for, right? I'm here to teach you how to slowly speed paint goblins. Um, and in, in the description of the video, um, I'll put links to Dr. Faustus' channel, um, maybe Miniac. He's another really good painter. I personally love Dr. Faustus. I've been watching him for years. He's kind of who got me into miniature paint, like really got me into miniature painting. Um, if it weren't for his videos, I don't think I would be as quote unquote good as I am. Um, cause like Dr. Faust is amazing. He, like, I learned so much from his videos, um, that I highly recommend you sit down and watch a couple. Um, he does traditional painting. He doesn't do this contrast stuff like I'm doing. Um, but it's a good primer to teach your basics like dry brushing, layering, uh, wet blending, the whole whole kit and caboodle. Like he he goes the mile, and any I, I just I, I can't recommend his channel enough. He is he is so good at his craft um, that he, he just just you gotta go see it. But there you go. That's that's another goblin done. He is ready for battle. Uh, at least he will be once that once that bit dries, and that is it. So yeah, um, that is my slow take at speed painting. Uh, again, it would probably be quicker. No, I know it's quicker if I'm not using camera because I'm not talking and I'm just listening to some music and zoning out. Um, but there you go. Two goblins ready to do battle. And as you can tell, uh, I don't know how well the lighting's going to be. I see if I can brighten it a bit. Um, it like the dirt looks really, really cool. Um, it's a little little transparent. It probably would be better if I painted the bottom because these were originally clear bases. But yeah, he, they they turn out really really good. They look nice on the table. Like you put some terrain with them and stuff. They they look awesome. Um, so that is my get, come on focus. That is my contrast paint tutorial for gobos. Um, got any questions, hit me up. Got any recommendations on what to do, hit me up. Um, we might do one of them like this. This was, this was painted a couple of years ago, but this is with regular paints. This is from Hero Quest. Um, but as you can tell, same sculptor did the same goblin. I think they look really cool in red. Um, I may do one in red just for funsies because I like the style. But I got a lot of Hero Quest miniatures left to paint, so I might just leave that for these goblins. Um, might do a video on one of those because this is three paints, um, four paints, red, brown, metal, orange. Uh, this one I used, uh, uh, bronze on, but so five paints for this guy and then the base itself. Like I said, remember how I said I was talking about the gray? Um, so ideally what I would do is I'd go back and, um, paint the rim of this black, which I, I might actually do. Uh, just so it kind of fits with everything else. And I'd probably put some ink on it. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some ink on the base and then paint the rim. Um, but yeah, that's that's it. It's it's very simple to make yourself some goblins. So have fun painting. Um, shoot me a comment or an email if you got any questions or you want to make some requests. Uh, I'll probably do another video like this sometime soon, I hope. Um, kind of depends on how I'm feeling. Uh, cause it's once it cools down, if, it, if, if I got a cool day, I'll come out here and I'll do some more. Uh, but until that time,